Hi, I just got back in from shooting this film through this camera. Let's talk about it. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Awkward Camera Enthusiast. Uh, just got done shooting some film through this old beast here. This is a uh, Bell & Howell Model 311 auto load. Uh, this is a, an early, early Super 8 camera. It came out in 66. And uh, I haven't shot any film through it before now, uh, but uh, just finished shooting a roll of uh, Pro 8mm uh, 250D, uh, daylight balanced film. So uh, just uh, shooting stuff around my neighborhood, nothing special, but I just want to see how this camera performs. So uh, I will ship this off along with some uh, film that's hopefully more intentional uh, rather than just, hey, that's a neat rabbit. But uh, be interested to see how this camera performs because uh, this one is, uh, I'm actually expecting pretty good things from it. It's a wind-up camera, meaning there's no batteries to get corroded, uh, with the exception, of course, of uh, the light meter battery. But uh, oddly enough, that one wasn't corroded. When I picked this one up, I opened up the light meter uh, battery housing. Still an old mercury battery in it. Dead, of course, but uh, light meter still worked when I put a couple of watch batteries in. Now, this camera uh, is pretty sturdy, obviously. It's a wind-up motor. Like I said, no batteries to corrode. It should probably run forever. Has a couple of downfalls, though. A um, couple of, uh, of irritating little things that uh, some, some of the later cameras took care of. This viewfinder, obviously, is it's not a reflex viewfinder. You're, you're not really seeing through the lens. You're seeing uh, slightly above and to the left of it. So uh, the framing in this will probably not be great uh, because I'm not used to compensating for something like that. Uh, also, and thank God it fell out in my house instead of somewhere along the way, but uh, this little filter key, you stick that in here for the uh, to disengage the filter, the orange filter, and it fell out, and I noticed that after I'd already shot. Fortunately, I was shooting on daylight film anyway, which means uh, the filter's disengaged just by the film cartridge. But uh, this, this little dude, Hickey, is, uh, that's how you disengage the filter, and that's real easy to lose. So uh, that's a bit of a, a downfall to it. But uh, that, and, you know, of course you have to stop and rewind your camera every so often. You'll be shooting something, and camera will just stop because it's wound down. Uh, but that wasn't, uh, that wasn't too big a deal, I didn't think. I mean, when I was trying to get, you know, one shot and suddenly... Uh, it was a little bit irritating, but, uh, but it runs for a decently long time on, on one wind. Uh, overall, I'm looking forward to seeing how this comes out. So what impresses me about this, uh, particular Bell & Howell is that it, uh, it came with practically every piece of paper, uh, possibly every piece of paper that, uh, whoever originally owned this got with it. Uh, advertisements, uh, the inspection tags from the factory, all still with this camera when I found it in the junk store. Uh, the manual, which is very helpful not to have to sit here and figure out what this stuff does myself. Uh, also, a little tips and tricks for filming for amateurs. Uh, incidentally, this camera was made in 1966, so this little pamphlet does go out of its way to assure the reader that the camera is simple enough for mom to operate too. A woman operate a machine? Preposterous! Bring me my martini! Yeah, the 60s. The past was always worse, folks. The past was always worse. But they made some pretty cool cameras, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what I get uh, out of this one. That's all for today. Talk to you later.